In this video, we're going to look at COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is an overview, an introduction. COPD encompasses a number of diseases, including emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and chronic asthma. In this video, we will mainly focus on and compare chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Let us first begin by looking at the signs and symptoms of both of these. Patients with emphysema are also known as the pink puffers because they have difficulty breathing but are well perfused. Patients with chronic bronchitis are also known as the blue bloaters because they are usually cyanosed. Some signs and symptoms in emphysema and chronic bronchitis include dyspnea, difficulty breathing, having a productive cough, and chest tightness. Patients with pure emphysema have a barrel chest muscle wasting, as well as pursed lips. Patients with pure chronic bronchitis can have peripheral edema and a raised JVP due to a potential right-sided heart failure. Let us now look at the pathology. Here I'm drawing a lung. Let us first begin by looking at changes that occur in emphysema. Pure emphysema mainly affects the functional units of the lungs, which are the alveoli. Alveoli are covered with elastic fibers, which allow the alveoli to expand and recoil back, pushing air out as we exhale. However, in emphysema, what we see is a loss of elastic fibers. You also have a decreased in surface area of the alveoli. This could potentially lead to a collapsed alveoli. You can have something called air trapping occurring, which is where air is still trapped in the alveoli as we exhale because the recoil mechanism is not working. In pure chronic bronchitis, we have problems along the airway tract, specifically the bronchioles. Here I'm drawing a normal bronchial with smooth muscle and mucus. In chronic bronchitis, we have smooth muscle hypertrophy and contraction, as well as mucus hypersecretion. This all leads to difficulty breathing. Some risk factors for COPD, both emphysema and chronic bronchitis, include smoking, advanced age, low socioeconomic status, genetic factors, constant exposure to air pollution and developmentally abnormal lungs, which predisposes one to COPD. Investigations that should be performed in a suspected person with COPD include a chest x-ray, where findings can include a flattened diaphragm and hyperinflation. Another important investigation or inv in examination to perform is a spirometry. A spirometry is a machine that a patient blows into. This is to measure the lung function. Here we have a normal spirometry reading with a normal inspiratory and expiratory curve. However, let's compare this to a graph with someone who has COPD. So again, here we have the normal inhalation and exhalation curve in black, and in red, COPD. There is a decrease in volume, especially during exhalation. The criteria to diagnose COPD is forced expiratory volume 1 over forced vital capacity ratio, less than 70%. Also, to be sure it is COPD, the administration of a bronchodilator following the first spirometry reading should improve the lung function. And so on the next spirometry reading, the graph should go close, closer to normal. The management of COPD involves smoking cessation, use of oxygen in late stage, bronchodilators B2 agonists or M3 antagonists, and steroid inhalers for as a preventer.